I've got a pretty special piece of wood here because it was sent to me by one of my viewers. Viewer Josh and fellow wood turner sent this from New York. And I've got other pieces sitting in line and I wait for an idea of how I want to use it because anything that's been sent to me is very, very special. So what I have here is a piece of red cedar and it's a trimming and a much larger piece is sitting on the bandsaw. So what inspired me to turn this, and that's kind of what I wait for before I use a piece of wood that's been shipped that far, is how to use it. So we've been watching a series on cable TV, and then they've been drinking out of these mugs, and I love the shape. And I've been thinking about that, but uh, a couple days ago, we went out with uh, our kids and our grandkids for my birthday, and we went to one of the favorite Mexican restaurants we go to and sure enough one of those drinks was served in a container just like that. I don't know if you call it a cup or a vessel or what it is but you'll see in the shape. I think it's really cool. That shape dates back thousands and thousands of years. So that's what we're doing today. That's all the taller it is and that's all I need. I won't be drinking out of this. I want it to sit on my desk with pens and pencils in it. I like the shape that much. I just want to use the heartwood so I'll probably trim this off. And I think I'll get a hole in here for a worm screw and meet you back at the lathe. I've got it mounted in the lathe and I had a real wide blade in the bandsaw so I didn't really make it very round. I cut the corners off. It's not perfect but it'll be fine. I use my inch and a half spindle roughing gouge we're doing around 600 RPM just because it's not that round. 700. We'll just get those corners knocked off and we can speed it up. Got my heater going as well. That's fun. That turned so nice. And we're still we're still big. That's that's bigger than what's gonna work with the shape I want. So it takes more off. Start rounding this over. Use a half inch bowl gouge for this. What a pretty piece of wood. So I want to flatten this off, see where we're at. In this. About 1100 RPM right now.
have a number of discs like this set up to be able to hot glue these on the bottom. Cut a tenon on it. I like to cut the tenon after it's hot glued on so it runs through. And we'll flip it around so I can have a better look at this and get the design I want on it. Or the design I have in my head. Hi. I've marked a line over here for the tenon, so we'll go ahead and cut that. I just sharpened the parting tool. Okay, we'll go ahead and get this flipped around and we will work on that top. Got it all flipped around and I want to make one cut on here just to continue the idea I had. And I'm also going to use this tool that I don't use very much. It has a quarter inch flute, three eighths bar. It's labeled one quarter inch, but I call it a three eighths. So, I just sharpened it up. Let's see how it works out. Put a much longer wing on the sides. Not bad. Just figured I might need it to get in here. All right, that's kind of looking like what I'm thinking. I think this diameter will come down, but that will be for tomorrow. So I'll see you then. I let this sit all night, and actually I've let it sit all day because I was busy with other things today. But now I want to get it finished up. Grab my face shield. I've got this little 3 8 bowl gouge sharpened up. That's it, right there. Well, that's it. That's all I needed to do. Perfect. I love it. Okay. You know, this is so soft of wood, I could probably just sand what I have. Let's, let's give that a try. Let me get some uh, air machines running and I'll do a little sanding. I've got my overhead air filtration unit running and I've got the lathe running in reverse at 518 RPM. And I'll start with 150 grit and I'll sand it up to 400. I need to start my dust collector and go ahead and get this sanded up. And when I come back, we're probably going to drill a hole in there. I have it all sanded up nice and smooth and since this is somewhat soft wood I'm going to start with an inch and three-eighths Forstner bit. I think it should handle it. Let's start out around 400 rpm 
I do have it on a glue block with uh, hot glue, so I've got to be careful with that. I want to bevel the inside here, make this thinner, and kind of follow that outside shape. Because this is hot glued on and I'm turning end grain, I want to add some support. So I've just put a little block in here and I have the live center against it. About 750 RPM. There we go. I think we got it. Okay, time for the finish. And I'm going to put a coat of shellac based sanding sealer on it. And then I'm not 100% sure what else I'll put on it. Oh, look at how red that is. Gee, even being colorblind, I can see that. Wow. Well, that's uh, really nice. I expected it to be red, but not that red. So a couple coats of this. I'm not sure if I'll put shellac on it. I might use uh, Axe Abrasive Paste on top of this. I, I'm not sure yet. I like it just the way it is. Okay, well, it is getting late. I'm going to let this sit all night and we'll finish it tomorrow morning and decide what the final finish will be. After getting two coats of the Zenzer Seal Coat on here, I decided I'd probably use Axe Abrasive Paste for the final finish. It was attached to this tenon. It was over here, reversed. As I applied the Zinsser Seal Coat, because it has alcohol in it, it works the same way I remove tenons. I put alcohol on the tenon and it releases it. So I saw it getting loose. I decided, okay, I'm not going any farther. So I flipped it around. I have it on a jam chuck. I've got the tail stuck against it here, but I really don't need it. It fits on there good, but I'm leaving it for support. So let me go ahead and... Uh, do some of this and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we ended up with. I'm going to do this in reverse. I'm going to start out about maybe 500 RPM. So it's pretty simple and it makes a nice finish. And I'll see you shortly and show you what we have. There it is. It is all done. And I love the color of this wood. And all the little features that came with it. It's pretty cool. I love that shape. I wish I could say that I came up with it. But <clears throat> this is a very old shape. And uh, may not look exactly like this. I just could see this in my head and I started turning it. I like it just the way it turned out. But... It dates back at least 2,000 years ago, and I think 
much, much farther back. I think uh, they found vessels like this made out of clay 3,000 years old. It stands four and a quarter inches tall and it's about three inches in diameter and I drilled it out with a two and an eighth inch Forstner bit and then from the narrow point here I put a shape in there it's about three sixteenths thick. I used Zinser seal coat and I didn't put shellac on it but then I went over it with axe abrasive paste and polish. I think it looks perfect. So a special thanks to Josh for sending me this piece of wood. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, there's a couple things you can do that will let me know that you did. You can give it a thumbs up and you can also leave a comment. That would be great. If you're not subscribed and you like what you saw here, please consider doing so. And of course, all you current subscribers know exactly how I feel. Thank you very much. You're much appreciated. Make sure you stick around and see the photos here because it'll probably look better than with me holding it and I may have something special added in there. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that done or not, but till the next time I'll see you later